Hey guys, Coach Gaglion here. I apologize in advance. My voice is a little hoarse. Uh, uh, three days of coaching in a row plus a 10-hour car ride. A car ride in, a, in, bo in both both ways uh, from the the Arnold Classic this weekend. It's kind of left my throat a little sore, but uh, uh, just kind of going back to what I was saying. <clears throat> uh, so this is going to be a special uh, this video, and we're going to try and do more of these. Uh, kind of meet recap videos, uh, whether it's a local meet or a bigger contest. Uh, I think it's kind of good to see um, what kind of actually goes on, go, I guess what goes into actually handling a lifter at a meet, uh, what goes into actually coaching somebody on the platform, um, kind of the strategy that we kind of use uh, in different situations. I think there's a lot to be learned. And I also want to kind of showcase some of our team members, uh, the accomplishments they're making, and also just like the people that we're working with, uh, the people that we're kind of helping on and off the platform. I think it's going to be a good learning experience for everyone as well as you guys get to see some cool uh, kind of footage from the meet. So uh, for those that don't know, um, you, you know, the Arnold Classic has been a very prestigious meet and probably the most prestigious meet on the, the like more of on like the East Coast side of things, even though it's not directly on the East Coast. A lot of the bigger meets like uh, the Boss of Bosses, the US Open, um, LA Fit Expo, etc. A lot of those really big meets are on the West Coast. Uh, so the Arnold is kind of like the premier meet, more on the kind of the east side of things, uh, as far as at least in the United States. Um, typically, uh, up until this year, uh, the USAPL has kind of really dominated uh, the, the actual uh, convention center itself. Uh, they have always done a really good job of uh, having a, a lot of different contests and showcasing some of their, their best lifters in the country. Um, and uh, the XPC has been uh, the, the alternative uh, for people that are uh, doing uh, multiply and raw with wraps uh, in the case of a monolift. And outside, uh, and outside of the Slingshot Record Breakers meet, uh, which is hosted by just my, my good friend and former coach Jesse Burdick uh, out in California, he's out in Dublin, California. Uh, besides that meet, uh, I would say the XPC finals is going to be a, your premier meet as far as it's actually out of a monolift. Um, every other kind of raw with wraps meet uh, is kind of out of stands. Uh, and then now the WPO is back as well, um, but that's still kind of a newer thing. So as far as in the past couple of years, the XPC finals has kind of been, uh, that was kind of like the next thing after like kind of the WPO went away, uh, for those that are kind of familiar with that. And the WPO was like the premier kind of pro and multiply meet, uh, kind of in like the early 2000s era, and that was at the Arnold as well. Um, the WPO is coming back. Uh, we'll see, and I hope that, uh, that that continues as well. That's another conversation for another day. Uh, but uh, we're for right now, XPC, as far as uh, any uh, raw with wraps, the monolift, multiply out of a monolift. Uh, this is kind of like the premier meet where there's actually some uh, some money on the line, some recognition on the line, uh, and it's the, it's pretty pretty darn competitive uh, on a national level. We don't see um, necessarily like the best of the best uh, come together. Uh, all the time, like we would see at like a USAPL Nationals, for example, uh, or like a, a US Open meet, for example. Uh, but the competition is very good. I definitely think that this is, uh, for a, someone who's uh, kind of in, say, somewhere in between like the top 50 to top 25 of their weight class for Raw with Wraps, or if someone's in the top 20 uh, in their weight class for like Multiply, uh, I definitely think it's a great kind of first kind of higher level national meet for someone to kind of aim for. Uh, the qualifying totals are not are not, uh, not easy by any means. And basically for those that are not familiar, uh, there's an elite day, there is a pro day, and they actually just added a master's category, which I think is cool. Uh, maybe we could talk about how, uh, maybe how they can kind of improve that a little bit. But so basically uh, the way they kind of broke things up this year, and uh, this year was also a really cool milestone because it was the first uh, year that it was actually in, inside the convention center. Uh, in years past, it was in the road center, which was off-site. Uh, and the road center was actually great as far as the spacing and stuff, and it was nice from a coaching standpoint. But as far as a, a building, um, a sport, uh, I should say, um, from a fan standpoint and a, a way to kind of grow the sport standpoint, I think having it in the convention center is definitely a huge step in the right direction. Uh, it's going to expose more people to multiply lifting. It's going to expose more people to uh, raw with wraps using the monolift. And I think that's a good thing. It just shows people there's different options. Um, it shows that there's other options besides just squatting out of stands. It shows that there's more options besides just squatting uh, and competing in knee sleeves. And I think that's good to give people more options. Um, I do think that the USAPL, as far as in the, on the drug tested side and on the raw side, 
uh, especially is certainly the most competitive and especially on the world stage, the IPF uh, still is going to have the best kind of drug tested raw lifters out there. Um, but I do think it's good to have people that, you know, it's good to have other options and it's good to showcase those other options for people that want to uh, potentially, you know, do different avenues, whether that's raw with wraps, whether it's using a monolith, whether it's using equipment like multiply gear. Uh, I think that's a good thing because uh, people may want to try something different or maybe for whatever reason uh, uh, they're more inclined to do one uh, form of powerlifting than the other. So I, I do think that the, that's a good thing. Uh, for me personally, um, like I said, we have Chuck Vogapol on the wall over here. Uh, we've got Vanita Sento in the background and then obviously we have Ed Cohen over here. Uh, we have some kind of, you know, some of my favorite lifters. Um, when I was kind of growing up, the WPO was kind of still a thing. Uh, when I was getting into sport, uh, I you know grew up watching the old VHS tapes of Westside Barbell, seeing you know people like Chuck Vogelbull hit the first thousand pound squat at 220, and uh, seeing him like break numerous world records in different weight classes. Um, our gym, you know, we got to spot and load uh, for the Westside Pro Rotational held by Donnie Thompson. Maybe we can kind of include some kind of overlay footage uh, in here as well for the Westside Pro. And uh, I thought the Westside Pro was great. I think you know some of the judging stuff could have been a little bit better, uh, but. You know, we got to see, uh, you know, people like David Hoff, uh, you know, break uh, Donnie Thompson's record in total 3,005 pounds. Um, and people like Jason Coker uh, hit, hit a 900-pound bench at 198, uh, the second Westside Pro. Uh, things like that, you know, to be part of a meet like that was really cool. Um, and it's unfortunate that it kind of dissolved. It's really hard to get everyone on the same page. Um, but that being said, it's nice to see the XPC is heading in the right direction. I do think that there's things that could be better. Uh, so just going, going back to what I was saying before, as far as the breakdown of, of the weekend, uh, they elected to just do one session per day. Uh, there was an elite day, which is had a, a more um, easier qualifying total. Uh, so if it's the kind of, again, for those more up and coming national level lifters, uh, the qualifying totals can be a little bit lower, but still challenging. Uh, we had two lifters compete on the elite day. Uh, we had one multiply lifter and one raw lifter, raw with wraps. Uh, the pro day is a more uh, elite, uh, well, I should say it's a professional total. Uh, it's a, it's a hard, much harder total to get. It's going to kind of single out. So it's going to really get more of the best of the best competition. Um, again, not necessarily um, the best in the world. Uh, in this case, we did have a few like Stacey Burr competed and she actually hit a all-time world record total as well as hitting the all-time uh, highest Wilkes ever. So congrats to Stacey Burr. We've had actually Stacey on our podcast before. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check out Stacey Burr's podcast. We can include a link in the description. Uh, fantastic lifter, great person. Uh, and congrats to, congrats to her. It was great to watch her lift uh, and, and seal that uh, record on her uh, deadlift. Um, so on the pro day was a little bit more challenging of a total. And then um, on the Sunday was the master's uh, class. And since they didn't have uh, enough masters to kind of fill, they also kind of made it like an open invite kind of deal. Um, Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday, and I'm not, I'm not going to make this whole video kind of, cr of critique on the XPC, but I think it's worth kind of mentioning just to kind of help out because I do want to see it grow and I do want to see it get better. Uh, I think things could have been a little bit better. Uh, it may not be, I'm not sure logistically how they would do it, but I think since there was only one flight of multiply on Friday and Saturday, I think potentially having the equipped lifting all on one day could be an option or maybe its own session uh, because we ended up having on Friday and Saturday uh, like four flights of nearly 20 people uh, and we were done at like past 8 o'clock every night and I think that's a little bit too much, a little bit too long a day and I think the conditions could be better. The warm-up room was a little bit too cramped. Um, we, there, was a, there should be a little bit, hopefully, a better policing next year as far as only handlers in the warm-up room and only lifters in the warm-up room. Um, again, it took way too long and um, a little bit too cramped. There wasn't even like enough. There was only like four 25-pound plates in the back room. So I think the plate, the equipment could have been a little bit better, um, you know, maybe having a little bit more organization in the back room. That being said, it was the first time on the convention center, so I think uh, things were pretty darn good considering uh, the, the energy, the intensity, the music. Uh, the stage itself, I think, is fantastic. I really think they did a great job with that. Spotting and loading uh, was really, really efficient. Uh, but that being said, I think that things can be better, and I hope it continues to grow, and maybe you take you know, some of the suggestions and uh, continue to make it better. Because uh, it, it is a pro meet, and I think it should be, you know, the back room could be a little, a little bit better as well. Uh, so I think kind of potentially moving the multiply to uh, a day, and I don't know which day that would be, but... Potentially moving the multiply to one day could maybe solve some problems because it was only two flights 
on Sunday, and uh, there was three flights of bench only, so there was definitely some more room to maybe move some people to Sunday. Um, I do also think that for comp from a competition standpoint, having all of the lifters in the same class in the, each flight, I think, is a good idea. I think learning, taking a, a page out of like, the USAPL book, uh, I think having each kind of division in its own flight is very helpful from a competition standpoint. And then USAPL also does a really good job of actually having the on the monitor uh, the projected placing and the actual placing of the lifters kind of going into the bench and the, and the deadlift. Uh, so it makes things a little bit easier on the coaches. Uh, I, I know not all coaches do that. Uh, I know in the USAPL it's a lot more common to kind of treat uh, the meet more like a competition. Uh, and that's one thing I also want to talk about during this video is when you kind of get to a meet like this, um, when you get to a national level meet, uh, PR, P, hitting a PR total or hitting a PR in a certain lift is not necessarily um, the goal of the meet. The goal of the meet is to medal and the goal of the meet is to place as high as you can for that particular day. Uh, so sometimes PRs will do that, but sometimes they will not. So you have to kind of use uh, appropriate strategy, and I'll kind of talk about uh, how that kind of applies to some of our lifters in a bit. But the goal of a meet like this is you want to qualify by any means necessary, uh, and then when you actually get to the big dance, you want to try to place as high as possible. Uh, so that may not, a PR total may not um, be in the cards for you, but if you play sometimes a little more conservative, uh, sometimes you may need to swing for the fences a little bit to medal too. Uh, so your attempt selection is going to be, uh, you know, different depending on where you are in the standings and uh, what what your you know what's kind of realistic outcome for the particular day, and I'll kind of go into different scenarios for that. So, uh, so that being said, let's kind of recap the weekend. Uh, first off, I just want to say I'm very very proud of the team as a whole. I think this was our best showing at the Arnold yet. Uh, we actually qualified ten lifters for the event, uh, which is the most that we've ever had. We ended up having seven competing, including our, our coach, uh, Benny, who did a last man standing bench. Um, I believe he ended up with a 683 bench, so not his best showing ever, uh, but still great to see one of our coaches compete uh, you know, two years in a row. Uh, last year he benched 710, this year a little bit, a little bit less, uh, but you know, still a great showing. It's great for him to be there and still a you know, solid performance from him. So uh, let's recap the day. So on Friday, we had Nick Wheeler and Melissa uh, Mel Granados. Uh, they both did really well. Um, we'll start off with Nick first. So Nick had uh, a couple of uh, close calls not go his way. Uh, he actually missed his first two squats due to depth. Uh, I thought the depth was right there. Uh, they weren't convincingly deep by any means, but I thought it was enough to get past. Uh, I just elected to go up a little bit, like about five pounds each time, just so we didn't lose too much ground. On his third attempt, uh, Arnold was actually in the audience, and I uh, was literally like right up uh, in front of him when he was squatting. So I said, "Man, if nothing else, man, you got to sink this one and do it for Arnie." So uh, whether it was my uh, my words, his own doing, or Arnie's uh, motivation, uh, Nick Wheeler got his third attempt. Uh, he buried it and did really well. He left no doubt there. Um, so good job for Nick for kind of sticking with it and kind of you know sometimes uh, you got to roll with the punches. And I, and I say all the time, you know, everyone's when it comes to squat depth. Uh, it's kind of like an umpire in baseball. Everyone's strike zone is going to be different. Um, I did believe on that particular day, on the, on the elite day especially, I thought the squat judging uh, depth was a little bit inconsistent, which could happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to roll with the punches and you have to kind of adjust as needed. Um, the stage was elevated, so it was a little bit hard for me to see uh, depth every time. Sometimes the spotters were kind of in the way, which is one of the kind of, um, kind of sometimes people <laughs> I like to call it a monolith out and say that's a problem, but I think at the end of the day, it just really depends on the, where the spotters are standing. Um, and sometimes I couldn't really see what, uh, the, I didn't have the best angle for depth, but for the, from the angles from the front, from what I saw, uh, he looks like he was good on all three. But on the third, third attempt, he definitely buried it, he left no doubt. Uh, and sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes you have to adjust. Uh, maybe you squat into a different standard in training, and maybe you have to kind of uh, adjust your expectations uh, based on how the judging is, and, and we just, we did that. Going on to the bench, uh, Nick uh, smashed his uh, opening bench, which was really solid. We elected to go up to 460. Uh, very, 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 very close uh, call on this one, but uh, after watching the video several times, there was a little bit of an up and down. Uh, so he did uh, successfully bench 460, but I uh, did get red lighted for it. Um, another kind of uh, thing I think that, uh, especially on the elite day, they could have done a better job with. Uh, the lights were not going on all at the same time. Uh, I do think that is not really, uh, it doesn't really allow the judges to, to kind of judge the lift in a fair way because they can kind of see the lights go on before they make a decision. Uh, and I believe um, 
that might have been one of the reasons why Nick did get red lighted on that because it was so, such a slight up and down. Um, again, I'm a, I have a pretty good eye, and I did. I had to watch the video several times for, and it was still a questionable call. But neither here nor there. Uh, he ended up just not having enough uh, gas in the tank to get on his third, but um, still a great effort for him. Um, both were PRs in a, at 2:42, uh, I believe. And then onto the deadlift, he hit a really strong opener of uh, 705. He elected to go to 750 uh, to put him in metal contention. Uh, he had a very smooth, uh, it was a little bit tough lockout, but a very good starting position. He hit seven, 750 pounds. This gave him a, a 50 pound increase from his last competition. And I believe, uh, just going off memory, about a 50 pound total PR 242 as well. Uh, so I'm very happy to see him do that. Um, 1800 at 242 was good enough to, for a silver medal. Uh, for Nick Wheeler, so congrats to him. So first big meet on a big stage. Didn't have the, he had a rocky start, but he had a solid finish. Uh, so even though, um, and he also had a rocky training cycle. You know, he recently moved to North Carolina for his family. Just got a new job. Um, didn't have like the perfect training cycle. So for him to go in, even with some bad conditions, maybe some poor judging calls, or I should say some you know some calls that didn't go his way, um, that were borderline. Uh, he had a great effort and a, a silver medal on his first showing. Did a great job for Nick. Uh, so moving on to Mel. Uh, Mel had a really great day. She ended up going eight for nine. Um, again, I wasn't really sure how the judging was going to go as far as with the squat depth, but I just ended up making sure I called her a little bit lower. Uh, she was having trouble hitting depth in training. Uh, she was sick as normal. Again, some she had some rocky parts of her training cycle. Um, she honestly really didn't hit uh, a good depth in training until maybe her like final week of training. So I was a little. Uh, you know, uneasy going into the meet if she was going to be able to hit uh, depth or not, but she's a gamer and she kind of pulled out on the platform. Uh, I think she went, we went, uh, we went 420 for a good lift, uh, then we went elected, to, which was a, already a five pound meet PR, so good start there. Uh, then we went uh, 440, and then uh, uh, our final attempt was a 455, and I believe that was a right call. It was a tough, uh, it was definitely a tough, uh, tough grind. Uh, so that was good for uh, a four, 455, was good for a 40 pound meat PR for Mel. And it put her uh, a little bit in a lead because uh, the other girls in our class I think went a little bit too aggressive, so they ended up missing some attempts. So for Mel going three for three in the squat, put, get, put her in a nice, uh, gave her a little bit of a nice cushion because I knew that going into the bench uh, that she wasn't as strong as a bencher as some of the other competitors. She was going to lose some ground there, so I was happy that we were able to go three for three in the squat. So that was definitely our strategy because I was hoping maybe, uh, I was thinking that if, um, Depending on the judging standards of she might have been closer to 465, 470. We elected to play it a little more conservative, and we, uh, even though it was still a big PR, I thought she was maybe capable uh, potentially doing a little bit more as far as based on what she was looking like in training. But considering the depth that she hit and the conditions of the meet, uh, very, very solid performance. I'm very happy that she, how she done on the squat. On her opener, uh, the bench calls were particularly long in her flight, especially for usually, uh, usually the shirt will stop the weight. So usually on a multiply bench, especially, the press calls are generally a little bit quicker. Not to, not because it's multiply or anything else. It's really because the shirt is actually stopping the bar for you. Uh, so there's going to usually be a little, a little bit more control. It's usually a little bit of a, a little or a lot slower descent. Uh, but um, but the head judge in this case was really having the athletes do a ver pretty strict pause. Uh, so even though that the bar was probably stopped for a while. Uh, Probably holding on the chest a little bit, like even a good second longer than what I would typically see from uh, equipped benching. Uh, but again, that was a standard that was kind of being held for the for the competition and for that flight for that particular day. Uh, so on Mel's opener, I believe she lost some tightness in her upper back and her elbows kind of flared back and she ended up hitting the rack on her opener. Uh, we re retook it, she ended up hitting it on her second. It was very smooth, we made the adjustments. I uh, kind of instructed her to drive up and then kind of spread the bar. Uh, she just kind of flared a little bit too early, so we kind of made that adjustment and she did really well. Uh, I brought the collar down a little bit lower on her third attempt, uh, and she had a new uh, meat PR of a 230 pound bench on her third attempt, and I believe that's about uh, all she had that day, so good job for Mel. So she went two for three on the bench after missing her opener. Uh, moving on to the deadlift, um, I knew that she had a good cushion going into it, so we really just needed to nail the opener. And then after that, I knew that we can kind of be a little bit more aggressive with the attempt selection uh, from there. Uh, so, you know, opener looked pretty good. It wasn't like her fastest uh, 365, but uh, still kind of moved well. Um, we elected to take a 30-pound jump. Uh, and I believe, 
I think the opener might have gave her like a small knee PR already, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And she had a good cushion already, so uh, we didn't really have to play conservative anymore because I think she had a little bit of a gap between her and the, and the, ne the next girl uh, in her weight class. Uh, so we elected to go to three, uh, I think either 390 or 395 on her second, uh, which was challenging but smooth. Uh, so we elected, we started to crank the straps a little bit tighter to get the suit, the suit a little bit tighter. Uh, and she had a pretty uh, nice uh, 415 deadlift for a meet PR, all-time PR. And this also secured an 1,100 pound total, which ended up giving her a 60 pound PR total. Uh, and one, in the 165 classes was good enough for gold on the elite day for Mel. So uh, Mel has done USAPL nationals before. She's done big meets before. Uh, she didn't really have a great shilling at uh, USAPL nationals uh, years ago. Uh, so for her to you know switch over to multiply and do a big meet like this. I was really, really proud of her. Uh, she did really great, like eight for nine. Uh, it's not easy for when you're an equipped lifter, uh, 60 pound total PR, you know, fantastic day for Mel. So onto the pro day, uh, we ended up, we handled three three lifters, um, Michael Laro, the power turtle, David, uh, and then Kenna. Uh, so I'll just kind of recap. Uh, so for, uh, for Michael Laro, uh, Again, uh, really, really tough training cycle for him. Um, we had to modify a lot of things because he was having some lower back pain and things like that. He was actually thinking about pulling out from the meet. Um, in training, I believe he only was able to deadlift up to 600 pounds in training and uh, only maybe up to 700 pounds in the squat. And I believe, you know, Nick Wheeler had a similar thing, but, uh, but Michael Lara even more so. Uh, Michael was talking about pulling out from the meet. I said, hey man, let's just like get you up to like hitting your openers. Uh, and then let's just see like how you feel on game day and just rest. And, you know, you're ready. You're not going to lose too much strength. Let's just get you healthy. Uh, Michael is also getting uh, married for, uh, this month. So congrats, congrats to him and, and, and Jessica. Um, you know, Michael has been one of our, uh, you know, longest uh, kind of members uh, that's kind of currently competing right now. So I'm happy to kind of see him continue to make progress and continue to push the envelope with his training, even though he drives me crazy sometimes with his schedule. And he tends to kind of overdo it. Uh, so this was definitely a case where he kind of overdid a little bit of his training early on and he was having some lower back issues, but we just kind of did what we could. We wanted to just do enough just to stimulate his, uh, his progress and allow him to kind of just be prepared for the meet. He didn't necessarily have to hit any PRs in training. So going into the contest, um, you know, Michael has had some trouble hitting depth in the past, so I made sure that he was going extra deep in his warm-ups, calling his depth and, and things like that. Uh, his last warm-up was not like his best or squat or fastest, but once he got onto the platform, he had a very comfortable 700-pound uh, squat. Uh, and we elected to go for a meet PR next. Uh, he had a, a nice 745 squat on the second. Um, he was hitting like a perfect standard. Uh, he was just, just barely breaking parallel and coming up, hitting a good spot. I was calling him up in a good spot. Uh, so we elected to go 785, and uh, that was a really, really big meet PR for him. I believe it's about a 60 pound meat PR for him. Uh, and he's closing in on an 800 pound squat at 242, which is very, very, uh, very elite uh, to say the least. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, moving on to bench. Um, bench is something that Mike has struggled with a lot. He's had some pec problems and things like that. So again, bench is always a crapshoot with him, but opener looked really smooth at 415. Uh, went up to 435, which looks comfortable, but it was kind of coming up a little bit uneven. Uh, we elected to go to 450, a smaller jump on his third, just to kind of get a little bit more padding to his total. Uh, ended up tweaking his pec a little bit, nothing too crazy, didn't tear anything, but so we had the spotters take it right away, so he didn't really strain too much. So missed his third bench, went two for three on the bench, three for three on the squat. Again, going into the deadlift, he had the slowest, slowest warm up at 600, and I was kind of uh, a little bit afraid. So I ended up dropping his opener a little bit. Uh, we dropped his opener from 660 to 645. Whatever reason, I, he found some, uh, you know, energy from somewhere. Uh, he smashed his opener. It looked really good. Uh, we went up to 685 on the second just because I would secure a 1,900-pound total for him, which is already a huge PR. Uh, hit that fairly comfortably, but it wasn't um, the smoothest lockout. So he elected to go to 715. I think if a bird landed on it, he would not have gotten it. So I said 715 was the perfect call. Uh, ended up with a 1935 total, uh, which I believe is over 100 pound total PR. I believe, I think, I think 1805 or 1800 was his best prior. Uh, so really, really excellent. Mike has competed at the Arnold before. He's one of the few lifters that have competed at the Arnold before for a second time. I believe Mike won uh, the open, uh, excuse me, the elite day 
I want to say two years ago. Uh, so th this year he did his first pro pro meet. Uh, so great, great showing. I believe he ended up placing fourth or fifth overall. The 242 class was very competitive. Uh, I think uh, uh, Palco, uh, I believe, uh, won the 242 class. Very competitive, and he squatted something like, I want to say like 865 or something crazy. Uh, so it was a very, very competitive weight class, uh, but Mike did really well. I know he was one of the better squatters uh, for that particular meet, but um, in order for him to get a little more competitive, he's going to probably have to get the bench up and deadlift up a little bit. But still, 1935 uh, total of 242 is fantastic and a big PR for Mike, so I'm very, very proud of him. Uh, so on to the power turtle next. Uh, again, uh, he had a, uh, all these people had a little, pretty much a quick turnaround uh, for a lot of these contests. So uh, also, you know, so this was, it was definitely tough for, uh, you know, David was coming off uh, a PR total of 2075 or his, his previous meet was 2075. He was coming off a PR dead of 880, uh, which is amazing, a 275 world class. I believe he's still the number one, uh, well, maybe not anymore, because I think somebody, unless that was overseas, but I believe he's the number one deadlifter in the, in the United States right now. Uh, but his, his deadlift is, is one of the top, is in the top 20 all time, and I believe top 15 all time as well. Uh, so David is one of our, you know, our uh, more gifted lifters right now, and he's doing really well. Uh, we have some things to work on still, but again, his first uh, pro meet that he's done, he's done a lot of local contests, and he's been powerlifting for a little bit, uh, but this is his kind of first meet on a big stage, so I was really happy with how he performed. Uh, David opened with a strong 675 squat, came up pretty smooth. Uh, he liked to go to 715 on a second, it was also fairly comfortable, but his knee started to bug him a little bit. I didn't want to risk him hurting himself, so we ended up passing on the third, so he went two for two in the squat. Uh, David's bench press has made some uh, great progress. He had a, a pretty strong 485 in training, uh, and he struggled with his bench. I remember when he started working with us, uh, he was kind of even in the low 400s, so for him to get close to a 500-pound bench is fantastic. Uh, ended up uh, hitting a comfortable 445 on his opener, Fairly uh, then a strong 470 on the second. Uh, in my head, I wanted him to take 485 or 490 next, uh, but... Um, he really wanted to give a, a shot at 500. I knew it was going to be very close. So I let him kind of try it as a big stage. And, you know, I think the 500-pound bench would have put him in position to also go over 2,100 pounds on the total. So we elected to roll the dice a little bit on this one. Since we uh, didn't take a third squat, we kind of needed to make up a little bit of ground on the bench. And the 470 was still a pretty good number. So we elected to kind of make a little bit of a bigger jump. And in hindsight, maybe it was not like the best or uh, the best idea, but... Uh, it was very, very close. It was about, he missed it about three quarters of the way up. I think 490 and definitely 45 would have been there. Uh, but again, I wanted him to, he was very confident about it. So I wanted to kind of give, give him a, a crack at it. Uh, it was close, but we know for next time, maybe we'll just take a smaller record and not go for uh, an individual number. Think more about the total. But it was very, very close. And I wanted to give him a shot at it. He was, he was confident. He wanted to try it. So we elected since the 470 was a very strong second. Uh, so he missed his third bench, so he was, uh, I guess, uh, four for five uh, going into the deadlift. So the deadlift's his lift, uh, 775 opener, looked like 135, and he makes the deadlift look really crazy. Uh, he, we, ended up, we ended up going from 835. 835, uh, he kind of passed out a little bit at the top. Uh, it was strong, but it wasn't like his fastest 835 good for more but we elected to go for a 30 pound jump instead of going for a PR deadlift we just wanted to go for a 2050 total because uh, we knew that would be, put him in contention for a medal position and it ended up paying off the 865 was I think he had a little bit more in the tank uh, went up pretty smooth not a PR total not a PR deadlift but again like we talked about before uh, the goal is to place as high as possible the goal was not necessarily the PR this was good enough for bronze a bronze medal in a very competitive 275 class. Uh, again, first medal, uh, first podium position and medal position for David. So congrats to the Power Turtle, uh, great job. Uh, it's It takes a lot of discipline to kind of go for uh, placing and not go for like a personal record and thing like that, but it did pay off for him. Uh, moving on, uh, we helped handle Kenna. We helped, uh, so for Kenna in particular, she's had a lot of lower back issues and things. Uh, so just so we're kind of clear, she did uh, get some she was using a programming and peaking program from a different coach, uh, a different uh, kind of group. So I just want to kind of also just make sure that people know that. Uh, she did not use our uh, programming uh, into the final weeks for competition, but we have been continuing to help her. 
uh, whenever she can. I was traveling a lot the last month, so I wasn't seeing her as much, but she does come uh, during like the months of December uh, in early January, kind of leading up to the meet. We have been helping her out, and I've been kind of also, you know, always kind of have her back, guiding her form. Uh, she did hit, hit a qualifying total under us uh, before actually going to the Arnold, so of course we were going to help her going into the meet. Um, she didn't have the best performance relative to her, um, her training numbers. Um, you know, only got her opener squats. Uh, she went two for three on the bench. Uh, she missed her second attempt on, uh, on depth for squat. I think nerves just got to her a little bit. Uh, she ended up missing her third squat, just kind of didn't really get a good push out of the bottom. Uh, she missed her third bench as well. Uh, so she ended up with a 365 squat and a 220 bench, I believe. Yes, 220 bench. Um, so going into the deadlift, I knew that, you know, talking with her, I knew that she wanted to medal. I knew that she wanted to, to place. Uh, so again, we were just focusing more on winning and not necessarily a PR total. Uh, so we took some, uh, some more conservative jumps on that. Uh, she, I think, started with a 380 deadlift on her opener. Uh, then we elected to go 410, which is a little bit ch more challenging, but it was a PR deadlift for her. Uh, I did give her a thousand pound total, which tied her best meet. Uh, and we knew that was going to be enough for her to medal. Uh, and then we just kind of went for a little bit, another jump, but she ended up missing her third, her third attempt. Uh, that being said, it was good enough for first place. So she got a gold medal there, which is fantastic. And we're really proud of her. And we know that the best is yet to come. Uh, and then we'll definitely continue to kind of help her out in uh, future meets. So kind of as a strength coach, she's got you know, a lot of long hours. It's that uh, beginning of the year time is very busy for the strength coach, kind of athletes coming back from college. So I think all things considering, I know she got the flu like two weeks after the meet. Our goal with Kenna was just to put her in the best position to, uh, to medal. Uh, we did have another lifter, uh, Maggie, uh, also qualified. She ended up uh, just electing to kind of just sit this one out. Uh, she's also getting married very soon. We have a lot of lifters getting married. Uh, she's also just kind of starting a new business, Ironstone Barbell, if you're in the PA area. I believe it's uh, Heller Town. Hope that's correct, Maggie. <laughs> If you're in the Heller Town, uh, PA area, definitely check out Ironstone Barbell. They have all the toys. I'm, I don't get jealous of a lot of gyms, but I'm definitely jealous of Maggie's gym. She's got all the toys from Westside Barbell. Uh, Maggie's also only done one meet, but we could also kind of, uh, you know, overlay some footage here as well uh, from her meet as well. Uh, you know, her first meet, she I believe uh, she's totaled a 970 total in just knee sleeves, uh, 325 squat, I believe a 200 pound bench press, and uh, f uh, 445 deadlift. Uh, which is incredible in the 165 class. So it was actually, it actually kind of ended up working out better uh, in, in, a, in a coaching sense that I didn't have two athletes in the 165 pro division because that would have been a little bit of a conflict of interest there, but it would have been nice for them. They both would have placed if Maggie ended up going, but the fact that we only had one uh, woman in that division made my life a little bit easier so I didn't have to kind of, uh, you know, see them <laughs> battle it out. But that being said, I think if they both were there, I think they both would have kind of elevated each other. Uh, and hopefully they can uh, compete against each other in the future. I think that'll be a good uh, showdown, especially that, now, now that Maggie is learning uh, knee wraps as well. Uh, so I'm excited to see. And again, it was only Maggie's first meet, so I totally understand. Uh, but I'm very, very confident that she's going to do well, and she'll be at the XBC next year uh, in the future uh, if she wants to. So I'm sure she's going to do really well. Uh, also, I want to give uh, another shout-out to our other qualifiers, uh, Nicholas Donardo. Uh, out of Canada. Uh, again, he ended up kind of tweaking his hamstring a bit, so he ended up having to pull out from the meet. It wasn't really worth him getting ready. Uh, but I believe um, at his meet, I think he qualified uh, as well. Uh, he totaled about an 1,800, I believe, at 220, uh, over a 600 pound squatter, over a 400 pound bench. And I believe he finished with like a 750 deadlift. So we'll get the, we'll overlay the footage and get the exact numbers for him. But Nicholas Donardo also is a, Owns a gym, 613 Lifting in Canada. I forget the town, but we'll also include, if you're in the area, you should definitely check his gym out. Uh, great guy, really hard worker. And then lastly, another kind of knee injury, but uh, Justin Osborne uh, also qualified for, I believe, the Elite Day at 242. Um, and I believe uh, over 1,700 pound total as well. Uh, high 600 squatter and deadlifter and uh, 400 pound bencher. So I just want to kind of congratulate all the lifters that we've helped qualify. Uh, you guys did the work, but I just want to kind of give you guys a shout out as well, because uh, it is a big deal just to qualify for a big event like this. Uh, last but not least is our Masters lifter, Leo. Uh, Leo had a really uh, great meet. Uh, I know he was a little bit concerned uh, going into the contest if he was going to be ready. Uh, this is Leo's um, 
first meet actually in a full suit. Uh, last meet he just elected to wear briefs uh, and a bench shirt. So we just kind of progress, and that's kind of generally what we do. We like to progress people slowly. Sometimes we might do like a bench only meet, then maybe a meet in just briefs, and then like a full meet. So we just like to progress people slowly if you're kind of looking to get into gear. Um, that being said, Leo did a fantastic job during the training cycle, even though I know that he was maybe a little skeptical and a little worried because he wanted to do really well, but uh, he put in a lot of work and it ended up paying off big time. Uh, so we ended up opening uh, Leo with a 645 squat, uh, which is a weight that he was kind of hitting consistently in training. Again, just like in the case of Mel, I ended up, I had to call him a little bit lower than maybe what he was used to. So that was kind of a factor to consider as well. Uh, Leo did a a little bit of a high uh, 720 or 715 squat on training. So I knew he was going to be good for around 700 to a good depth. So anyway, we went from 645. It was smooth, but it, he lost his balance a little bit. He did get one red light for depth, so I knew we were going to have to call him a little bit lower. Uh, I called him a little bit lower. He hit a, a strong but but steady uh, 675 on a second. Uh, his, con his, his next best uh, competition, uh, I missed his a 625 squat on his second, so uh, that was put him in a good position. So I wanted to kind of create a little bit of a gap because I know Leo's bench is not as good as some of the other guys. Uh, so we elected to go to 690 versus 700, which could end up paying off because uh, Leo's did shift really hard to one side. He ended up with a 690 squat, and um, they put him in a really good position, gave him a good cushion. Uh, his competition uh, ended up with a 625 squat on his third, so that put him, uh, I think, a good 60 pounds ahead. Going into the bench, uh, Leo uh, went three for three in the bench as well. It's three for three in the squat, three for three in the bench. Uh, 385 bench, again, it wasn't as fast as maybe normal. Uh, so I, we only made a, a jump to 400 and then just a 10 pound jump to 410. Uh, Leo's competition hit a very strong opener. Uh, I think it was like, I don't know, something in the 400 range. And then uh, it went to 460, which was also very fast. Uh, but Leo's competition also went up to a 500 pound bench, so made a big jump. Um, ended up, his butt come, came up and he didn't quite lock it out, uh, which was good for our favor, because that would have actually put him ahead. Uh, if his competition made that bench, it would have put him uh, 25 pounds ahead. Instead, Leo was 15 pounds ahead going into the deadlift. Very, very, very close race, but as you can see, the person who makes more lifts is gonna be in a better position to win. And both their openers were within five pounds of each other, so it was a very, very close race. So they both opened with around 5.30, Leo opened with 5.35. They ended up both taking 5.65 on the second. Uh, both hit it very, very strong. So I kind of just, wait. I was pl playing the waiting game a little bit at the table, uh, and I noticed that Leo's competition went up to 6.15. Um, now I knew Leo was ahead. I don't know if you would know the strategy of dropping his, his attempt. So I knew that if, uh, if both lifters had missed, their attempt and there was no attempts uh, to change, then Leo would win, uh, Leo would win. But if Leo's competition got his third attempt by some miraculous, uh, you know, even though it was a big jump, if he did get it, you know, Leo, Leo would lose. So I had to at least match the total. Leo was one pound lighter. Uh, for those that don't know, if you do tie on the total, you will win on body weight. So I was only planning on having Leo take 585 or 590 on his third. Uh, but in order to match uh, his competition's total, if, if for some reason they did both get it, um, I knew that Leo had to pull at least 600 uh, to win to win outright. So if Leo did uh, make the lift and uh, his competition made the lift, then Leo would, would win by body weight. If they both missed, then Leo would, would, would win outright as well. So I, did, I wanted to, in a case like this, sometimes you gotta play the strategy a little bit. If I had, if I had thought that, um, the other lifter might uh, drop his weight down a little bit, then I probably would have been more conservative, but I just didn't think that he was gonna um, to drop his third attempt, so I elected to kind of match uh, the total. So it ended up, the strategy ended up paying off. Uh, we ended up taking the straps a little bit tighter for Leo. Uh, and, and Leo hit, is not really an explosive lifter by any means, but for whatever reason, I just told him, I said, hey man, if you hit this lift, it's a nail in the coffin and you're gonna win gold. Uh, and that's really all he needed to hear. Uh, so he had his fastest 600 ever. Uh, there was a little bit of a bobble at the top, so there might have been a little downward motion. He did get one red light uh, from the head judge, but it was so slight that uh, the sides gave him white, so it was a good lift for Leo, nine for nine day, and it gave him a 1,700 pound total. This was over 100 pound total PR for him, and the secured gold. Uh, Leo's competition ended up missing his last deadlift, but even if he got it, 
it, he would have won by body weight. So uh, pretty crazy. So he won, but he ended up winning by 15 pounds. But going into that third deadlift, it was only 15 pounds different. So it was a really, really, it was really exciting for me that it was that competitive, uh, and that was made things a lot of fun from a coaching standpoint. So really, really proud of him. Uh, it's not easy, like I said, when you're when you're you know a dad and you know you got a st stressful job and stuff, and you're an older guy. Um, you know, he did really well, so I'm really, really proud of him in particular. Uh, I also want to thank, you know, Brandon, Lewis, Stevie, Kim, uh, and Ryan uh, for coming out to help as well. Um, really, really appreciate it. And again, uh, also big congrats to Benny uh, for making it on the, the bench bash again. Uh, again, so we had seven lifters that we helped out at the Arnold. Uh, it's the most that we've ever had. It was very, very long days for me. I'm a little bit sick. I had like my worst like workout like ever. Uh, maybe if, if Elvis wants to show like a botched uh, bench press for me, but that's part of coaching. I had a, I had a bad workout today, uh, but it's worth it. So I'll, I'll get back on track next week. Uh, just for, you know, just to give you a little bit also uh, some knowledge, you know, stress is stress. So if you're coaching and you're coaching three days in a row, uh, just realize your body doesn't realize that if it's lifting or if it's driving 10 hours or if you're coaching, Stress is stress, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're kind of adjusting your training too. So just a little bit of a helpful tip for you coaches out there, or if you're kind of helping out a friend, uh, that's going to be important. Um, just some other kind of game day stuff. When it is a really long day, uh, we also had a lot of our lifters make sure they eat right after their their, lift, their event is done. So after you squat, eat a little something, drink a little something, get some sodium, some electrolytes. Do the same thing after bench, kind of going into the deadlift. Make sure you don't go crazy with your caffeine. Again, we were done at 8 o'clock each night, so if you really crushed the caffeine for the squat, uh, a lot of people didn't have enough steam for the, going into the deadlift. Um, make sure that you kind of adjust to the, the judging standard that's on the platform. Other things, again, like I said before, this is not to knock XPC because I think Danny did a great job. The guys at River City Barbell, I hope that they are involved again. They did the Masters. Uh, they had some technical glitches, but even with, um, even with, uh, with the monitors not working, uh, they ran a very, very smooth meet. I thought they're judging. I, I probably, in my 13 years of coaching, I don't think I've ever agreed with every every single call that the judges have made, and I agree with every single call that they made. So I thought they had excellent judging, excellent spotting and loading. They were very friendly and helpful. Uh, so I want to give a shout-out to River City, River City, River City Barbell. If you, I hope you guys continue to help out the XPC in the future because uh, you guys were fantastic. So I want to give you guys some uh, props as well. Um, I think it was a big step in the right direction for monolift lifting, raw with wraps as well as equipped lifting. Uh, it was really cool to see some of the West Side guys there. I saw like you know Wes McCormick, somebody who I've uh, trained with a few times at Westside. He's one of the best lightweight lifters in the world. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else that we saw. Uh, like I said, Stacy Burr. Um, it was cool to see one of my buddies, Greg Robbins, had a bunch of lifters there as well. If you're in the Massachusetts area, definitely check out the Strength House uh, if you're interested in powerlifting and strength. A lot of other guys as well. It's cool to see some of the jersey, a lot of the jersey lifters there. Uh, it was just a really great meet in general. I really hope it continues. I do think that there's got to be better like equipment, uh, better uh, things as far as um, knowing the, which competition is in which flight. Uh, like we had to, just little things like I had to bring my own collars and stuff. I had to bring my own wrap roller. I think that that should be like a, I had to, you know, we didn't have like there was no boards and stuff. So having boards there, having collars there, having enough weights, having calibrated weights in the back room. I don't think these are big things to ask. Having good deadlift jacks, um, making sure that the the warm up area is clean and organized, uh, and there's not people in there that doesn't belong. Just little things like that can make it better. Uh, but I'm really excited. I thought it was a great showing. It was our best showing at the XPC by far. We had a, a ton of medals, a ton of placers, a ton of PRs. And I'm just really proud of the team. And, and that being said, it's not really, again, I think it's cool to look at the numbers and all this stuff. To me, it's again, it's about the journey. It's about seeing the progress of the lifters. And yes, it's great to have medals and PRs and all this stuff, but just the fact that everyone performed well, everyone worked together, and to see their hard work in the gym pay off on the platform uh, makes me a very, very proud coach. Uh, so that's our XPC recap. And who knows, maybe, uh, Maybe I'll even get, uh, throw my hat in one day. I still got some fight left in me. Uh, I'm still going to be a coach first. I got to get ready for my meet. It just makes me a little bit more fired up to, uh, to do better on the platform for my next meet on April 6th. Uh, if you guys want to check out some of our links below, please do. Uh, if you're interested in coaching or checking out the gym, anything like that. If you like the video, please subscribe for future content. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, stay strong, and we'll see you soon.